friends, hello, and welcome to the humble guitar abode. I want to do a little bit of a different video and educate the general public on something that is actually quite simple, okay? We're going to do a little bit of music theory today. We're going to talk about the difference between a major and a minor chord. Now, my friends, part of why I started this YouTube channel last summer was because I looked at a lot of the guitar and musical instructional channels and go, doesn't need to be that confusing. My God, if I was a beginner, I'd be lost. So first and foremost, the things that you guys need to remember. I was the guy that wasn't always in class. I was also the guy that got hit in the head a lot. And if I can learn this stuff to a pretty high level, and learn to play at a reasonably high level, depending on whose opinion it is, depending on whose opinion it is, you can do this too, okay? First thing, okay, I, I have known a lot of people over the years where they're like, hey, you know, like, they want to learn guitar, they want to learn theory, but the thing is theory, musical theory, is basically the understanding of how music works. When you're playing an instrument, it's understanding what you're doing. That's what it is. But a lot of people, they tend to get afraid. They get this feeling of fear when they first hear the word theory. It's kind of like the word diet. Well, on Monday, I'm starting to diet. Oh my God, it brings up all these feelings of angst and whatever. Now, for theory, for a lot of people who don't understand it, we make it out to be a lot harder than what it is. And a lot of it is, is in the interpretation. How it's explained to you, how it's broken down. So, I've had some pretty good luck with my methods of teaching this over the years, really simplifying it. I know now they say on YouTube, don't use cards, but I wanna post some links here. Months ago, I made some very, very simple, broken down, and short theory videos for the average layperson, average Joe on the street who maybe doesn't even wanna be an amazing guitar player. Maybe he's just a music lover that just wants to understand a little more, okay? I'd encourage you to check those out. So in my ladder of teaching we have here, the first thing with theory is the chromatic scale, okay? If you don't understand the basic chromatic scale, the basic chromatic scale, if you don't understand the chromatic scale, it's basically understanding the order of the notes in music. If you don't understand that, and if you don't understand it, the layout of the chromatic scale or the notes on the guitar or the keyboard or whatever instrument you're gonna be looking at, the rest is not gonna matter. You're, you're, there's gonna be confusion. So. My method of teaching, always learn the chromatic scale first. Now, if you don't know what that is, the rest of this video might seem a little bit confusing to you. And we don't want that here, okay? Remember, hit like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. Hit like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. Check out the link that I posted for my very first absolute ground zero beginner theory lesson. I see a lot of people out there, there's a lot of great wonderful music channels out there, and I see a lot of people they follow and comment on a lot of these channels when they get into these theory lessons or whatever, and they're like, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, but it sounds cool, so I'm gonna like it and subscribe. Well, let's, why don't we learn what it means together, okay? So, your first step, the chromatic scale. I've, I've given you a link, I've given you a link to learn it for free, okay? Not a big deal. And I break it down really simple, okay? Chromatic scale, the next thing, your next step after the chromatic scale is you have to learn the major scale, where it comes from. The Formula, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now, whole steps and half steps can also be referred to as tones and semitones, depending on who's teaching ya, okay? So then once we have that, okay, and again, I'm providing a link to a video where I talk about the, the major scale, I really break it down, easy terms, okay? If you're not sure about all that, please go there first, and then come back here. So the next thing is the major scale, okay? Today we're gonna talk about Understanding the difference between a major chord and a minor chord, okay? Really simple, okay? So we have our major scale. We, in this case, we used the D major scale, okay? For a lot of people out there, they're like, I don't know where those notes came from, but they're saying it's a D major scale, so I guess that's a D major scale. Well, why don't we learn together where it comes from, right? Again, go back to those videos. There are a couple of short videos, guys. 20 minutes out of your lifetime. When you're done those videos, you will be a better musician, okay? So, go to the major scale. We have something called the degrees of the major scale, one to eight, okay? When I say degrees, I'm not talking about karate, guys. Or is that kung fu? Anyway, so to make a major chord, we know how to write out the major scale. We'll do this in D, as I said. To write out a major chord, 
or to play a major chord, we take the first degree, D, the third degree, which is F sharp, and the fifth degree, which is A. We put them together. We have what's called a major chord. So when we play a D, F sharp, and an A together on the guitar neck or on the keyboard, we have a D major chord. One of the beginner chords people learn on guitar, one of the tougher, the 15 beginner open chords, a little bit more of the tougher one, it's the D major, okay? A lot of people in the beginning, they have trouble with this one, hitting that high note. If you watch my cover version, my video, aha, take on me, but a little bit of a harder sound. And I put a little bit of a cool solo in there for you guys, in my opinion. I'm making fun of that, how a lot of beginners, they have trouble with the D. But if we look at the beginner open D, you're playing your open D string. That's your one or your root. The next one, the second fret on the G string is A, which is our fifth degree. Then we're playing D again, third fret on the B. And then the high note here is our third degree, F sharp. That note is an F sharp. If we take this note, okay, if we look at the minor chord, Okay, so major chord, you have first, third, and fifth. You take the first, third, and fifth degree, D, F sharp, A, put them together, wonderful. Life is just wondrous. Now, if we put a minor chord, okay, it, it's a little different. It goes first, flat third, five, okay? Now, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Hold my hand, and we'll walk through the valley of death together. What's that saying? If I walk through the valley, anyway. So, all that means is you take the third degree, and you lower it a half step, okay? So anything with a flat third in its formula, there's formulas for all kinds of chords and all kinds of scales out there, folks. If we take that and lower the third degree, it, it becomes minor. Anything with a flat third is minor, okay? So in this case, we have D. F sharp is the third degree. Okay, again, if this is looking like foreign to you, go back and watch those two videos. I can only say it so many times. Or I could sit here and say it a thousand times, but might not be an enjoyable video. Anyway, so second fret in the high E string. That's an F sharp, okay, for a D major chord, sounds great. But if we take it and we lower it, okay, it's a flat third, so we're gonna lower it a half step, one note. This becomes now a D minor chord. It's the only note we changed, okay? So we have a root, a one, a flat third, and a five. And that, it's as simple as that. Keyboard, same thing. When you learn theory, it applies to all the instruments. It applies to everything. If you play a D, that's your root. If you play an F sharp, that's your third degree. If you play an A, that is your fifth degree. Okay, you play them together on the keyboard, you got a D major chord or a D major triad. You often hear some of these really popular music channels, they talk about triads, triads are important. Well, two of the triads are major triads, where you take your root, your third, and your fifth, and minor triads, where you take your root, your flat third, and your fifth. So now, of course, you also hear diminished and augmented triads, but we'll leave that for another day. But there you go, half of your four triads, major and minor. Any questions, post below, any comments, suggestions, whatever. Just trying to make music to be a little bit easier for people out there to learn. We're all enjoying the journey of music together, and at least we have music in this crazy world. Remember, practice hard, but practice smart. And we'll see you soon.